Hi everyone, this is Dr. Sarah Harrington from the Division of Palliative Medicine here at UAMS. Uh, we are going to get a series of very short practical uh, PowerPoint modules um, out to trainees uh, to be able to access um, and, and learn independently. And we're going to start with this one uh, entitled Introduction to Palliative Care. So what is palliative medicine? This is a specialty focused on pain and symptom management in serious illness. Uh, the goal is to prevent and ease suffering and to ensure the highest quality of life for patients and their families. Uh, we seek to honor patient preferences and improve communication between patient, family, and team. And by nature, palliative medicine is interdisciplinary. Uh, we have a team that includes a chaplain, a social worker, uh, nurses, and doctors. So palliative medicine can be initiated at any point in a patient's illness and is independent of prognosis. It can be provided alongside curative care. Now closer to the end of life, if a patient has a terminal illness, it may be the sole focus of care. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that later. What I want everyone to recognize is these are not the same two things. Um, and oftentimes these terms um, are uh, misunderstood. So uh, these are not the two same things. Uh, what I see palliative care being is a bit of an umbrella with hospice being one of the many things under the umbrella. So hospice is a program of palliative and supportive services provided in the home or in inpatient settings for patients with weeks or months to live so they can live as fully and comfortably as possible. And usually with hospice, these are for patients who um, the doctor believes has six months or less to live. And we'll do a whole module on what is hospice and, and what kind of services uh, does hospice provide. This is a bit of a newer definition for the Center to Advance Palliative Care. Palliative care is specialized medical care for people with serious illnesses. This type of care is focused on providing patients with relief from the symptoms, pain, and stress of serious illness, whatever the diagnosis. The goal is to improve quality of life for both the patient and the family. Palliative care is provided by a team of doctors, nurses, and other specialists who work with a patient's other doctors to provide an extra layer of support. Palliative care is appropriate at any stage, uh, any age, any stage in a serious illness. So I call this the old model of medical care. Um, it is alive and well. Uh, hopefully we are moving away from this. You can see time is on the x-axis and clinical focus is on the y. So let's say a patient's diagnosed with a life-limiting illness here and 100% of the focus is on curative or aggressive care. As that disease progresses, we get kind of to this arbitrary point where we go, well, and time is short and there's nothing more we can do for you and we kind of flip a switch and we go from very aggressive care to comfort care and that's when we talk about getting hospice um, involved right before the patient dies. This is not the best model of care. Uh, first of all, why should we reserve um, kind of comfort and quality of life to this little slice um, and not move this upstream? Also, if this is your philosophy of care and how you've been communicating with the patient or the family, when you get to this point and say we're, you know, we're changing focus, typically the patient and family is not ready for that conversation. It makes this conversation very, very difficult uh, when this has been your whole philosophy of care. This is a much better uh, model, uh, one that we are shooting for. And this was first described by the National Quality Forum back in 2006 as, as it related to cancer care. Um, but we, we know now that uh, upstream palliative care can be, uh, is a good model for any disease. So again, same model, we got time on the x-axis and clinical focus on the y. A patient is diagnosed with a, a life-limiting illness Early in the disease course, absolutely most of the focus should be on disease modifying treatment, but at least a small focus should be on providing good palliative care. So that's good pain and symptom management, taking care of the whole patient, uh, paying attention to physical, psychosocial, spiritual support for the, for the patient and family. And then as that disease progresses, you can see that palliative piece becomes less and this aggressive curative piece becomes, I'm sorry, the palliative piece becomes more and the aggressive curative piece becomes less. 
And then when you get to this final uh, terminal phase of a patient's illness, that's when we bring in hospice uh, for that phase of the illness. And then after the patient uh, dies, this uh, triangle here of bereavement support for the family is really important. So as you can see, this is a much better model of care than this very dichotomous one. So for example, um, I have um, a palliative care clinic and many of my patients are sent to me maybe around this place, okay? So um, they're not, it's not quite time for hospice, but we are starting to have some conversations about what are the goals of care? What's important to you? Do you have a, a healthcare power of attorney? Do you have an advanced directive? When is the right time for hospice? How much of this and how much of this um, should we be focusing on? What are your palliative needs and trying to meet those? Um, we get many consults in the hospital that are really here, uh, closer to the end of life um, and caring for those patients. Uh, that are that are nearing end of life. Um, this is just another diagram. This is kind of where is hospice in the in the scope of modern medicine, and this is palliative medicine. So as you can see, all of hospice is palliative. Not all palliative is hospice. If that makes sense. Okay, so whose job is it? Get this question a lot. So I want to introduce the concept of primary and secondary palliative care. So primary palliative care um, is the concept that all clinical providers, all physicians, all nurses, um, all clinical providers should have some competence in the core skills of palliative care. Um, if you are in medical school or in residency and are training um, to be a physician, all physicians, whether you go into internal medicine or family medicine or surgery, should have some basic skills in palliative care. So good uh, basic skills in pain management, basic skills in communicating with patients and families, basic skills in recognizing as a patient close to the end of life. So that's something we're trying to teach uh, everyone. And then this concept of secondary palliative care is when subspecialty physicians like myself or our palliative care team are brought in as consultants. Um, so this is where each organization or region has a specialized interdisciplinary team that's available for consultation on very difficult palliative care issues. So I always use the cardiology example. Um, as an internist, I know what to do if a patient comes into the ER and has chest pain. Um, I don't say just wait right here, I'm gonna call the cardiologist, right? We have some, have some core skills in basic cardiology where I can treat a patient with chest pain. Um, and then calling in the cardiologist if the patient needs a, a cath or there's some sort of um, arrhythmia that, that's difficult to manage. So same thing with palliative care. So what are some of the benefits of palliative care? And when I refer to this, I'm talking about early palliative care, not palliative care 10 minutes before the patient dies. So if we get palliative care more upstream in a patient's illness, um, many studies have pointed to better pain and symptom management. We have fewer ER um, uh, visits and admissions and ICU care at the end of life, more patients are home. Um, most patients, when you address some of these issues early in their disease course, they choose less aggressive care at the end of life. More advanced care planning takes place. We have more timely hospice enrollment, uh, better family support, and many studies are pointing to improved life expectancy. So at the very least, having palliative care involved does not shorten uh, life expectancy. So what we're finding is with better pain and symptom management, we're treating depression better, we are um, doing better advanced care planning, patients can actually live a little bit longer uh, than they would otherwise. So what are we consulted for? Um, most of the time palliative care, uh, at least at UAMS and the VA, is consulted for pain and symptom management, particularly in patients who have a life-limiting illness. Uh, we can help with goals of care conversations. We can help with coordination of care, both within the hospital and outside the hospital. Um, we can see a patient to see if they're eligible for, for hospice um, and help with that enrollment process. And then for patients who are dying in the hospital, I think it's always a good idea to get palliative care involved um, as part of the treatment team to help uh, with end-of-life care. 
So for those of you who practice in the hospital, um, you know, when should you think about a palliative care consult? So these are just some things um, when you are rounding on your inpatients, you know, should, should we be thinking about getting a palliative care consult? So first is the surprise question. Would I be surprised if this patient died in the next 12 months? And if your gut said, would not be surprised, that it should be a, um, a nudge to at least start some advanced care planning and to think about getting palliative care involved, um, at least to kind of suss out goals of care. Frequent admissions. Is this patient admitted five and six times in the last three months for the same end-stage disease? Um, complex symptoms. Uh, complex care requirement if the patient has a functional dependence or complex home support needs. Um, if they have a failure to thrive, so a decline in functional status, weight, or the ability to care for themselves. Um, do they have an advanced care need? Um, do they need help completing an advanced directive or at least having a discussion? Um, do they have limited social support? Is there family stress? Is there mental illness, lack of caregivers? So our palliative care team can help with those kind of things. And then finally, do they have a limited prognosis? Um, if a patient um, comes in with failure to thrive and has widely metastatic uh, solid tumor, um, this may be a good time to talk about goals of care. Okay, so what do we have at UAMS? For those of you um, who are new to UAMS, we do have a palliative care program. We do inpatient consults, so we are consultants. Um, we have to be invited in by the primary team. Um, we are interdisciplinary, and we, we try to do as much education as possible on campus. Um, we have a hospice and palliative medicine fellowship program. It's the only one in the state. It's a one-year fellowship. Um, and then we have a palliative care clinic that's embedded in the Winther P. Rockefeller Cancer Institute. And just so you know, we are also the only hospital in the state that's Joint Commission certified uh, for a palliative care program. Um, for those of you who practice at the VA, we have a slightly different setup at the VA. So inpatient, we have a consult service. We see patients in the Little Rock and the North Little Rock VA hospitals. At the VA, we have an inpatient unit in a palliative care service. So we admit and discharge our own patients. Uh, we transfer patients from other services, but we have our own closed unit. It's on 6 Echo, uh, where we do end of life care, uh, inpatient palliative care, Care. Not everybody dies on our unit. Sometimes we admit patients for difficult to manage symptoms and then get them home with hospice. Um, we have an outpatient clinic at the VA and then we are in charge of uh, many veterans who are home with hospice. So just a reminder at UAMS it's a consult only service at the VA. We actually have an inpatient unit and a service. So thank you for your attention. Uh, this is just a short intro uh, into palliative care. Hopefully you have a better understanding of uh, who we are and what we do. Thank you very much.